Now that we've talked about the limitations of traditional file and folder systems, let's take a look at how Rome's block-based architecture gives us some interesting and creative new possibilities for managing and connecting our knowledge and information. So to do this, I'm going to open up a couple of pages here in Rome. To start, I'll click in the search bar here and type the word moon. And you can see I've got my facts about the moon document here that I've moved over into Rome. Next, I'm going to hit command U. That is the keyboard shortcut for jumping into the search bar. And I'm going to type the word solar system and I'll arrow down here to the facts about our solar system. And before I open this one, I'm going to hold down the shift key and hit return. And that will open it up here in the right sidebar, which is a feature we have not covered yet, but is a very handy feature of Rome, a great way to work on two different pages side by side. We'll be covering that a lot throughout the course. All right, so if you recall from the previous example, what we did was we wanted to create a connection between a couple of different facts. We have this one over here. There are over 200 moons in our solar system. And then we had this fact here, the moon is planet Earth's sole natural satellite. So the way that we're going to create this connection in Rome is what's called a block reference. Again, it's called a block reference. This is a very important term in Rome. What I'm going to do here is I'll right click on the bullet and I'm going to click here on Copy Block Reference. I'll then come over here. I'll hit Return, and I'm going to Tab to nest this under here, and I will hit Paste. Now, when I do that, you're going to see that I end up with this crazy-looking uh, alpha, alphanumeric string here. Uh, don't worry about that. That's just the uh, unique identifier for that particular block. If I move my cursor away from that line, you'll notice that the text here from the original block is now populated here underneath this one. You can see that it's kind of lightly underlined. And if I hover my mouse over it, it gives me this little arrow symbol. So those are your visual indications that this is a block reference. Uh, if you click on this block reference, you'll see there are a bunch of different options here. We'll cover most of these later in the course. So we're not gonna dive into those now, but feel free to kind of explore around there and read up on those if you're curious about what those are now. But for now, we're gonna keep it uh, we're going to keep it pretty high level at the moment. Um, so why does this matter? Now that we've created this block reference, let's take a closer look at how this feature addresses those three limitations of traditional file and folder systems that we talked about earlier. So number one, this is a very precise connection. So unlike in uh, the Google document example that we did before, where we were only able to create links at a page level, here you can see that we have created a link at the level of an individual idea. So Rome allows us to be very precise in terms of the way that we link knowledge. Um, and this is, again, opens up some very interesting and powerful possibilities as our body of personal knowledge grows. Number two, this is a bi-directional link. So again, unlike the previous example in Google Documents where the link was only in one direction, what we can see here is that Rome, when you link blocks, just like when you link pages, is always going to create a bi-directional link. And to illustrate what that looks like, look over here in the right-hand side and you can see this number one next to the block that I referenced. And if I click on that, you'll notice that it shows me where that block has been referenced throughout the graph. I can click on this expand arrow here to see the block in its uh, referenced context. I can also click over here on the little Rome symbol to see more information. Um, so again, just know for now, the most important thing to understand is that these links are bi-directional. When we created this link on the moon document pointing back to the solar system document, it uh, inversely created a link on the solar system document pointing back to the moon document. So again, these bi-directional links are very important and over time they become increasingly useful as they give us a more accurate picture of how our knowledge is interconnected. And then finally, easy updating. So if you'll recall in our Google Documents example, if I updated this fact here about the moon, it would not update in any other places throughout my knowledge management system automatically. Uh, here it's different. So let's say I want to come back and revise this fact again to be more accurate. So I'll say there are currently, uh, I think, 218 known moons in our solar system. And you can see right away that when I did that, it updated the block reference in my graph as well. So all of those links are going to update automatically any time that I change the original block. So congrats, you've created your first block reference. Again, this is a major component of Rome. So make sure you kind of take your time to play around here and understand the basic mechanics. Um, don't sweat it too much if you don't fully understand or, or intuit how 
useful this is. This is a brand new paradigm and it can take some time for it to sink in. But just know that unlike traditional file and folder systems, uh, Rome's block references allow us to, again, be very precise with how we create links. They allow all of those links to be bi-directional and they allow all of those links to be easily updated throughout time as our uh, knowledge and information grows and evolves.